Eastman's proposal, so I can't really, I can't really offer any commentary on it at this point. Do, do any of you guys have thoughts about just the principle? I mean, it seems like that rule is not one that is really uh, abided by by the legislature. Is there a way to fix that, and should it be fixed? Well, I think when it comes to tightening up the rules that provide more transparency, uh, more availability to the public. Uh, our caucus definitely is in support of that. And I would add that it's not just the media that's had issues with the 24-hour rules. I think it's been members as well in the years past. And uh, like Representative uh, Clayman just mentioned, the bill just got right across the floor yesterday. We haven't had time to consider it. But uh, I'm sure it's something that uh, will definitely come forward. When, when we go to conference committee on the budget, it's an indication of the, the phase of this legislative process has changed, right? We finished with the budgets. We're in conference committee to deal with them. Everything changed. We haven't, as a caucus, got to the point to look at actually what, how we deal with that, but we are also committed to doing things in a, um, a very fair and open way and um, making sure that it's transparent, that you're not, the, the notice period is not, doesn't undermine everybody, but that 24-hour period when it hits is a really good indication for all of us to pay attention because the pace changes. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. Um, Mr. Speaker, you mentioned um, later this week some legislation. Can you be more specific on what the legislation will seek to do? Are you At the centerpiece of the fiscal plan you mentioned. Yeah, our, our hope is to um, uh, get legislation uh, right across the floor before the week uh, concludes. And um, I think you will get the opportunity to hear from the co-chairs of the House Finance Committee, Representative Seaton and Representative Foster, per the details of that plan. So I'm going to leave it at that for now, but just to sort of put out there that uh, we do expect to have uh, uh, the bill uh, introduced and hopefully being heard uh, very soon. And just to follow up, maybe for you or Representative Guttenberg, yesterday the Senate majority said one of the issues that was complicating last year was there were so many pieces. And their thoughts are, let's focus on a few. Um, of course, theirs is cut spending, um, a spending limit, and the permanent fund. And then if we have a gap, say 800 million, which is what the number was used yesterday, then let's come back next year and figure out how to do that. But let's focus on some things. Um, Democrats last year were very reluctant to go to the permanent fund first. They said it has to be last um, as an option. So how do you sort of see, I guess, what do you make of that idea of let's, let's focus on a couple things and then come back next year? And do you still maintain that position on the permanent fund? It's not the first thing we go to, it's the last. Well, I think when we're going down to the end of the legislative session, we have, and, and last year is a good illustration, we had the ability to have everything very close to the end where we could have dealt with all those issues, right? You know, if you, if you don't want to hear something all session and you get to the end and say we ran out of time, that's not a valid excuse. We dealt with everything, almost everything last year. We're going into the process this year. There's, when you know something is going to be an issue at the end, you deal with it. We're looking for everything to be in play. Some things might not get to the end, but if you don't hear something all through the legislative process and then complain that you didn't get to the end, that's not actually um, participating in a, in, a, in a fiscal plan process. So it might not be one thing first, but you can't just refuse to hear it and expect at the end of the day that that prevails in the argument. Every, we expect to see everything churning and everything moving and then when we get to the end, we'll negotiate a, 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 um, a package deal that, that fits, not everybody's going to like it, but it's going to fit some criteria that gets us there. Representative Spottles. Yeah, um, I want to follow up a little bit um, on uh, Representative Guttenberg. Um, I think that, um, you know, what we have right now is, uh, is um, an effort to try to narrow the conversation pretty quickly with regard to what's on the table. And 
uh, I, I want to be really frank that um, we can't be in a situation where we're looking at um, cuts only and a permanent fund. That's a solution, a permanent fund restructuring. That's a solution that is hardest on working Alaskans and has a lot of consequences that are, uh, I think, people are not thinking through all the way. It's really important that we're aware that for every hundred or hundred million dollars in cuts that we make, we're talking about losing 1,700 jobs. We're going to be losing a lot of jobs as we move into what is already been identified by some professionals as a, a recession. And I think that it's our caucus's position that we want to protect every single job that we can. Some people think that uh, government and jobs aren't important. I would want to uh, disagree, and I think that our friends in the Matsu Valley that are very concerned about having enough troopers uh, would disagree with me. I think that people would be very concerned about making sure that we have enough teachers in the classrooms. We want to make sure that we have enough nurses that are offering inoculation. So there's a lot of services that are really important. But in addition to those jobs that we lose, about a thousand of those for every hundred million dollars in cuts, we also lose about 700 private sector jobs. So all of those troopers and teachers and nurses also spend money. They pay rent, they buy groceries, they buy gas, they buy uh, clothing, and all of those other things that we all need every day to survive. So we could be having really strong impact on our economy as we go into what's already going to be a soft and vulnerable, vulnerable economy. I think our caucus wants to protect every single one of those jobs that we can, and Alaskans want those services. So a cuts-only solution is just not going to work. And let me just add my perspective on it with and agreeing with my colleagues here the public is really frustrated we've been down here the last two years running into special session after special session and they say what happened to 90 days what's what did you learn that after 90 days that you couldn't have solved it in 90 days and the answer is we know the information we know it today we can finish in 90 days and when people say let's like take some lessons from the business community let's see what businesses know and a business that faced an 800 900 billion dollar or million dollar deficit it would not be acceptable to punt it down the road for another year the the public says get down there and get it fixed and it's not going to be easy and you're going to make a lot of people unhappy and people are going to be critical of whatever you do but if you kick it down the road another year that's failure Liz Rains with KTVN, uh, KTVA again, just following up on that. Last year, the governor put out a comprehensive plan um, at the start of session, and what we saw that even after multiple special sessions, none of his revenue bills were passed. Um, we saw that uh, some passage of some bills was conditional upon the passage of others. And um, so how does the House majority now, um, moving forward in week four of the session, um, if everything is on the table at the same time, how do you avoid that happening again or is the plan, in fact, to introduce measures sort of piece by piece so that there, um, you, don't, you avoid that problem of uh, one piece being conditional upon another? Well, I, I think what you're hearing uh, this session is a strong commitment from both the Senate and the House to make this a focal point in the entire session. We've got to solve the fiscal situation. We've got to make some tough uh, choices this year, and we've got to uh, come forward with something that uh, hopefully leaves uh, uh, some money in our constitutional budget reserve and uh, also um, uh, you know makes the the, the painful uh, uh, the task of uh, reducing the budget uh, a reality and uh, from our coalition you've heard uh, using earning, earnings from the pr uh, permanent fund as well as uh, uh, tackling the problem of unsustainable oil tax credits um, so the, the the fact that uh, the Senate is espousing that they're narrowing um, sort of the uh, the menu of, of choices, if you will, uh, to me, that's encouraging. Um, I think whatever plan that we come forward uh, will be, um, uh, you know, possibly in concert with what the center's doing, but as well may have uh, some different pieces that uh, in the end we will come to uh, an agreement on. I'm, I'm pretty encouraged by, you know, what I'm hearing thus far about it being very important to get that done this session. I think last year you saw too much gamesmanship and not enough statesmanship. You saw comments about, well, this, these, these, this set of uh, revenue measures need to be not one bill but broken apart. Then when we broke them apart, the governor broke them apart, then you said, well, there needs to be one bill. So that was, um, I think, a little bit of disingenuous um, uh, politicking on my part. 
Um, but it's like a gearbox. You have all the gears working. They all have to be spinning. If one is locked, it's the, you're not going anywhere. So I think out of this caucus, you're going to see a transparent process with everything on the table um, moving forward at the same time. And um, when we get to the end of the day, they will all be poised and ready to move forward. They all will, or some of them won't. But that's where we're going to be. We're not going to be able to say that one thing didn't work or we didn't hear one thing, so we're not going to hear it. Um, I think that's part of the process that we're committed to. Um, there's a, a bill up uh, soon on a, the real ID, uh, the governor's uh, real ID bill. Uh, current state law puts the state out of compliance with real ID. Um, do any of you have thoughts on the, the real ID bill? Uh, the real ID bill was one that we started the process last year. It's actually a, we need to pass a bill that recognizes the need for a real ID bill because it impacts federal monies and I think we've gotten a waiver the last couple of years but it's one of these one of these things that we need to move forward with and move forward with effectively Austin Baird from KTU again um, on Senate Bill 91 Representative Clayman are you concerned that there will be a departure from uh, reliance on data and uh, push back in the direction of relying on maybe emotional but not always fact-based public outcry? Well, part of the justice reform effort is a commitment to, to being data-driven and looking at what's actually happening and not getting caught up in myths. And I was appointed to serve not as a voting member, but Senator Coghill and I both serve now on the Criminal Justice Commission. And it's actually very positive that when that commission meets, they remain committed to looking at the data and say what's really happening. A perfect example was there was this myth going on that the criminal justice reform actions by the legislature had changed the bail schedule. Well, actually, the fact is that the court system changed the bail schedule because the, the legislation wouldn't take effect until 2018. So that was one of the myths, and the court system appropriately is taking a look at that bail schedule to see whether they could make some fine tunings in that to make it work more effectively. But they're doing that on an evidence-based approach. And that's, I think, what the public needs to know, that we, we aren't just doing this based on myth. We're actually doing it based on real data and what's going to work to make Alaska a safer place and how we're going to get more, more dollars or more benefit in terms of public safety. One of the biggest impacts in public safety is that we've had such cuts to the prosecutor's office that they're declining more cases than they have in years. And that's not a function of any legislation about a criminal justice reform. That's just the budget realities that they don't have enough prosecutors in the offices to prosecute everything that gets brought to them by the police. We're talking about that with the public because that's one of the consequences of the budget cuts. People say cut till there's pain. Well, we're hearing it in the communities about public safety. Liz Rains with KTV again. I uh, just had a follow-up. Uh, Representative Guttenberg, you mentioned that um, the idea with the fiscal plan is to have all the gears moving at the same time, have all the bills sort of poised to pass at once. But um, the legislature has to pass bills one by one. So what do you pass first? Well, that becomes the question, right? Um, uh, la last year, you know, there were things that weren't ready at the same time. So. The budget process is, is, is strange at the end of the day. I mean, it doesn't make sense for even the people doing it. But you have to have everything at, right at the finish park and trust each other. You will always see at the, leg, at the end of a legislative session, one body passes the, uh, a series of bills, the other body passes a series of bills. The other body goes back. So there's, there's checks and balance on how that's done. And at the end of the day, even though we're cynical about each party, each body working together, we make sure that that's done. You've seen it year after year at the end of session. As the clock is ticking away, there'll be a series of bills come out and just that are poised, that are ready to pass. Then the other body will pass them. I imagine it, in some ways it'll be the same thing. You know, I think it's important to point out, too, that uh, we need to differentiate between the annual budget that uh, the legislature is working on and a fiscal plan that looks many years out in the future. So you're going to see um, uh, the downsizing of the budget occur in the budget bill itself, which, as we all know from experience, is a very voluminous document. Uh, it's, it's, uh, 
you know, again, use the word centerpiece. It is a, a big part of what the legislature is required to do, and it's going to take up a lot of our time this session. The fiscal plan, um, again, will have uh, elements that uh, may differ from the Senate's perspective and the House's perspective, but um, I'm very confident that in the end uh, we are going to uh, reach some kind of a consensus that uh, gets us uh, a, a substantial way towards a sustainable future for the state. So with that, I think we're coming to a close. Do we have James, one more question? One more question, and we'll call it good. Sure, this one's to Representative Guttenberg. I uh, wanted to follow up on something you had just said. You had said uh, it was a little bit disingenuous politicking on my part with regard to uh, last year's uh, fiscal debate. Do you now regret the vote that you made in the Finance Committee with regard to the permanent fund bill? Well, I don't think I said disingenuous on my part. I said disingenuous. But no, that was probably the toughest vote I have ever taken, my vote on the permanent fund restructuring and finance. I have relived that many times. Personally, it, ha it does weigh heavily. It'll be one of my, um, when I think about historically when I look back on this, I don't regret that I did that. I still think I did the right thing. Um, both my friends and my enemies have complimented me and given me a hard time about it. Um, it was a tough thing to do, a very, very tough thing to do, but I don't regret my action. So with that, um, thank you, everyone. We'll look forward to seeing you next Tuesday, same place, same time. Have a good uh, week. James, that's a good question. It, it, I mean, I'm serious when I say that was a tough decision, and I have relived it. Well, we'll get to the same place, right? Yeah. Well, I, I support everything that I'm